Hogwarts Legacy. I've been wanting to talk about this game for a while now. As some of you may know from my previous videos, I'm a huge fan of Harry Potter. It's a series that practically raised me. All great childhood obsessions start with fear. I remember seeing Fluffy the three-headed dog as a kid and going into fight or flight mode. Ever since that day, Harry Potter has been ingrained in my soul. But I definitely wasn't alone. If you were my age growing up in the early 2000s, you knew your Hogwarts house before you knew your own blood type. Even now, if I'm on a date and she doesn't know her Patronus, guess it wasn't meant to be. Here's the thing, Harry Potter fans have never been starved for content. We had all the novels, the movies, spin-off films, cookbooks, a theme park, BuzzFeed quizzes, cringy millennial merch, whatever this thing is. We had it all, but truth be told, it was never enough. No, what we always truly wanted was an open-world Harry Potter game. Sure, we had the mainline series of games and the LEGO games, but it never quite scratched the right itch, you know what I mean? We wanted to create our own characters, attend our own classes, and learn our own spells. In a nutshell, we wanted that cozy feeling that the books gave us, but in video game form. From a series so popular, it was really only a matter of time that one day we would finally live out our childhood Hogwarts fantasies. Well, that day finally came. Hogwarts Legacy is here. I've been following this game ever since the first leaked gameplay footage back in 2018, and I gotta say, it feels pretty amazing to have finally played the game that I dreamed of as a 10-year-old. It raises a question though, was Hogwarts Legacy worth the waits? The reason why I gave you my entire backstory just now was because I need you to know that this review is extremely biased. This isn't just a review for a game I played for 80 hours. It's a game I've been invested in for 15 years. Am I being too dramatic? Let's just dive right in. Hogwarts Legacy takes place 100 years before Harry's time at Hogwarts. So while the school and grounds are faithfully recreated as we knew them from the books and movies, there's also a lot of flexibility to make something fresh and exciting that we've never seen before. I love when fantasy worlds expand their timelines. It's the perfect way to bring fans back into the world that they know and love, while also experimenting and showing things from a new perspective. There's also the fact that because Hogwarts Legacy takes place so far back in the past, if this game's story did end up sucking, it doesn't affect the characters and original story from the books, and I really appreciate that. So you play as a fifth year Hogwarts student who arrived late to the school. Because you're so far behind the other students, you're put into a special program with the teachers to learn all the basic spells and catch up. For the most part, you have the freedom to make your character whoever you want them to be. There's a pretty solid character creator, you can choose which house you want to be sorted into. There's wand and clothing customization, it's basically everything I could have wanted from a Harry Potter game. I'm a big customization gamer, I spend all my GTA money on clothes, and I play Dark Souls like it's fast. Souls. I'm telling you this because Hogwarts Legacy has probably my favorite customization in any video game I've played. There's just so many options for clothing to find in the world, so many different styles of robes and goofy looking wizard hats. A little hot tip for you guys, I used to hoard all of my favorite outfits in Hogwarts Legacy, but then I learned that even if you sell the clothes to a vendor, you can still wear them as cosmetics. I don't know why more games don't do this, it's so useful. Okay, we're getting off track. Let's just talk about the world for a bit though, because I really think it's the biggest strength that this game has. I have fallen in love with Avalanche Software because you can tell they are extremely passionate about Harry Potter from all the videos they post on their channel. They even have a designated Harry Potter lore keeper on their team, which is just so awesome. This world that they have built is truly something exceptional. It's one thing to adapt a world from one medium to another, but they added a whole new dimension to Hogwarts. We've already seen these nostalgic hallways in the movies, but what's on the other end of them? Well, now we can actually find out. Playing this game has changed the way I watch the movies and read the books, because now I feel like I just understand the castle better. And the castle is huge, by the way. Even after basically 100%ing the game, I still get lost exploring Hogwarts. It's massive, and not just that, but it's also filled with interesting things happening all the time. Students playing pranks, statues getting up and walking around, ghosts chasing each other through the halls, paintings talking and playing music. The castle is not just big to be big, 
It's immersive and tangled and full of life, exactly how the books make Hogwarts seem. This is also a completionist kind of game because there's a lot of stuff to interact with within the school. There's locked doorways, puzzles, secret passageways, mini games, and chests everywhere. You can't enter a room without having at least something to play around with. There are a lot of repeat puzzles and lockpicking minigames, and most of the time I don't like when a game overdoes something like this to pad for playtime, but it's kind of like the Korok seeds in Zelda, where if you pass by a puzzle, you might as well stop and do it. Sometimes I'd even hop on the game for a half hour just to explore the school and do some puzzles, so I'm really not complaining. So Hogwarts is amazing, but that's not even half of it. There's also the entire massive grounds outside of Hogwarts to explore. You have these long stretches of beautiful countryside, there's Hogsmeade Village with vendors and students and more puzzles and interesting things to interact with. Scattered around the world, there are other villages with their own quest lines. This game is very big. In most games, having long stretches of land is boring and bloated. But in Hogwarts Legacy, you can ride a freaking broom, dude. Getting around is a breeze, and if you're like me living out your childhood wizarding dream, sometimes just riding around on a broomstick is all you need. Maybe it's ADHD, but in most games, I'm always rushing to the next objective. If I'm not actively working towards something, then I feel like I'm wasting time. In Hogwarts Legacy, all I do is waste time. A simple errand run to Hogsmeade for some potion ingredients always ends up turning into a 20 minute flying session. It takes me back to a time when video games were simpler and more restrictive, so I had to make my own fun. The only difference is that this game is massive and non-restrictive, and for some reason I still want to experiment and adventure and waste time like I would as a kid. I think one of the biggest reasons this game doesn't get boring for me is its expertly crafted gameplay loop. I talked about it a bit in my gameplay loop video earlier this year, but it really does suck you in and always keeps you engaged with something new to focus on. One of my favorite things about Hogwarts Legacy is the Room of Requirement. It's a room you can fully customize and suit to your own wizarding needs. You can set up potion tables and planting stations to give you an edge in future battles. In order to make the potions, you gotta make a trip to Hogsmeade to buy ingredients. In order to afford those ingredients, you gotta fight some enemies to get some money. And to beat those enemies, you guessed it, having potions will help a lot. So you see, it's this endless loop of always having something new to do. I think the one thing that the potions and plants mechanic is lacking is the fact that they never get stronger over time. Once you've unlocked all the different species of plants and potions, You've kind of seen them all and know which ones are going to be most helpful to you. Having some sort of mechanic where you can upgrade the potions and plants would really keep this interesting for a lot longer. But regardless, the fact that you can have your own little tycoon of plants and potions is really fun and works super well for this game. While we're on the subject, let's talk about the combat. I was super curious how they would pull off ranged wand battles in this game. There are so many spells you can unlock through classes with different functions in battle, and surprisingly, switching between them on the fly is not as hard as I expected. Eventually in the game, you can upgrade your character to have different sets of spell loadouts, which makes changing your playstyle and experimenting with spells a pretty viable option. Personally, I think I kinda suck at combat. This is isn't really a fault to the game, but switching spells while also dodging and parrying is a lot for my little brain to handle. The benefit of having a complicated action combat system though is that you can really see yourself improve over time. It's like when I first played Dark Souls and went from missing every attack to learning how to dodge and eventually getting better. In Hogwarts Legacy, learning spell combo strings is really fun and adds a layer of skill that the game desperately needed. I was also really impressed with the boss fights in this game. These fights are pretty intense. You might think that the ranged battles would make things easier, but you really have to be on the top of your game for these fights. That's when throwing out things like combat plants and using buffing potions is really useful. You can truly see all of the small mechanics within the game slowly come together. While I can't say for sure because I know I'm being biased, I really think Hogwarts Legacy is an impressive game regardless of the franchise it comes Comes from. However, there is a catch here. Why do I love Harry Potter in the first place? It's not the spells, it's not the Quidditch, it's not even the world building really. 
It's the story and characters that grounds it all and makes it feel real. I love this series for Harry's ego, for Ron's jealousy, and for Hermione's annoying self-righteousness. It's the flawed and relatable characters that make Harry Potter a universal experience for people of all ages and backgrounds. Hogwarts Legacy's story and characters are not that. The main storyline is very by the numbers. There's an evil guy you learn about right at the beginning, and your mission is to defeat him. There's not many twists in the story, it all unfolds exactly how you think it will. I think a storyline like this is fine for a video game, especially since Hogwarts Legacy thrives in the gameplay side of things, but it's a little mediocre for a Harry Potter story. All in all though, I really think this game is something special. I don't understand why reviews were so lukewarm when this game came out. Regardless of what you think about Harry Potter in general, this is an impressive feat for a studio that's never done something like this before. I would love to see a sequel to this game, but honestly, I could revisit this game again and again and be totally okay with that. So, the answer to the question, was it worth waiting 15 years for an open world Harry Potter game? My answer is yes. It's not flawless, but it's exactly what I wanted it to be. So let me know what you guys think of Hogwarts Legacy. What house are you in? I'm a Ravenclaw, if you couldn't tell by the video. <laughs> okay guys, subscribe for more reviews like this one. I'll see you soon. Uh, bye bye